Caitlin Parrish's latest hit video from her album called Caitlin. We're at the home of Max Parrish, Caitlin's father and manager, where today Caitlin Parrish is marrying actor Gary Hawk. Like us, Caitlin's fans are here hoping to get a glimpse of the happy couple, but so far we're all out of luck. I'm Ann Liebman, Entertainment Today, outside the Parrish Mansion. you wherever you went you're a star at least this way you have your family your friends you know you and dad are the only ones i care about you and uncle perry are you sure he's coming well he said he would and perry mason always keeps his word <laughs> whoops it's uh, almost four o'clock i'll tell your father you're ready okay oh honey i'm so happy for you thank you mom Let the others keep an eye on the ground. I want at least one of you two in here on duty at all times. We'll take care of it, sir. Any of those gifts get stolen, it's your personal responsibility. You got it, Mr. Parrish. This is my daughter's special day. I don't want anything to spoil it. We'll take care of it, sir. What's your problem? I busted a gut to land this job. I'm not losing it. Put it away. Lighten up. Look, you don't know me, so I'm telling you. I won't ask you again. Put it away. Got a real attitude, you know that, pal? I ain't your pal. No kidding. Perry. Oh, hello, Max. It's great to see you. You remember Della? Of course. Glad you could come. Me too. Glad to meet you. I love weddings. Usually so do I. My wife calls me a hopeless romantic. Uh, it's been too long, Perry. Where are the women in your life? <laughs> They're both upstairs. I haven't seen either one since early this morning. Here's the bridegroom, Gary Hawks. Ah, handsome young man. Oh, he's a star on a daytime soap. Uh, One Life for Tomorrow. I happened to see it once. You saw it twice. I saw it once. He's very good. Who'd have ever thought I'd be father-in-law to Brad Hawks' boy? It's a strange world, Perry. 
Well, duty calls. Didn't you tell me that Gary's father was Max's partner? Yeah, in a talent agency. When it broke up, they never spoke to each other again. Brad died a few years ago in a car accident with his wife. Huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, are you nervous? Huh? Yeah. Well, maybe I should marry Kay. Make sense? What are you talking about? You know, I work for her dad. Marrying the boss's daughter is a very good career move, so if you're really nervous, then we'll switch. I'll be the groom. You'll be the best man. You're a pal, Sam, but I gotta go. Mr. Hawks, this is Della Street. I'm Perry Mace. Oh, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. always says you're a favorite uncle. I'm her only uncle. Okay. Mason, I'm Hannah Hawks, Gary's sister. Ah, the maid of honor. Yes. I just wanted to tell you that I've studied all your cases, and I hope I'm half as good as you are someday. Are you a lawyer? Knock on wood. Well, up until a few years ago, I thought I was a singer, but I switched tracks. I'm taking the bar next week. Good luck to you. Thank you. Maybe we can talk later? Of course we can. Okay, thanks. Perry, I'm so glad you could make it. Laura, you look wonderful. Oh. And you have not changed a bit. You remember what I used to say. You never change, Perry Mason. You only weather. And Della, of course. I've heard so much about you. This must be quite a day for you. Thank you for inviting me, Mrs. Parrish. Laura, please. Perry. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You have no idea how much this means to me. Okay, they're waiting. Just coming. Max Parrish. I told you everything I know. What more do you want? No, you can't come out. Not today. Because I'm telling you, not today. Commission again? Can you believe that they would call here today? Dad, can't your lawyers do something? Now they're intimating that someone may have some new evidence. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Let me look at you. Maybe you should talk to Uncle Perry. Sweetheart, this is your wedding day, and nothing is going to spoil it. That's a promise. same civil rights committee. What civil rights committee? Oh, around 25 years ago. The year you lectured at Georgetown? That year, yes. Laura and I spent a lot of time together. Laura and Max were going through a very bad time. They filed for divorce. How'd they get back together? Oh, they hit a very rough patch, but they weathered it. Laura had found out she was pregnant. Now, they're the happiest couple I know. Especially today. Especially today.
Be seated, please. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the face of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony, that which is honorable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently. I can't believe I'm missing this. If any person here can show this cause why these people should not be joined together, let them speak now or forever. Get out of my way. Get away from me. Get out of my way. I thought you'd get away with this, didn't you? Hello, Lon. Why don't you sit down? Don't invite me to my own nephew's wedding. My own brother's son. It's a matter of match you forget. No, I didn't forget, Lon. Your new father-in-law thinks he's too good for me. Lon, God's sake. It's Kay's wedding day. Well, you're not better than me. And this will show you. I'm getting security. This will show you just what kind of man you really are. Oh, Sorry, everybody. Uh, if you'll just give us a moment, everything will be just fine. Take him into the study. Please just give us a moment. I'm so sorry, baby. Your Uncle Lon, isn't he ever going to leave us alone? I mean, last time we gave him money, he swore he'd never come back. I could kill him. You want us to call the cops, Mr. Parrish? No cops, no reporters. Put him in my study. Here, I'll get that door for you. Guess he can't bother anybody in here. This door lead to the dining room? Yeah, I liked it from the other side, remember? Keep him in here. What's that? What? Nothing. Give it to me. Sleep it off, buddy boy. Take care of everything. But it's your wedding day. This is terrible. Mom, it's all right. I promise. I mean, if this hits the news, I'll sell another three million CDs. Easy. The staff says they'll have everything cleared up in 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, thanks, Perry. I'd better make an announcement. Um, Mom, can I take my mom and get some champagne? Oh, sure. They have the envelope I won't let anyone or anything spoil your wedding day. Remember, that's a prance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good friends, uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. We'll be ready to continue in just a little while. So just have some champagne and thank you for your patience. Don't you have a keepsake gift for each of the guests? You know, maybe if we handed them out now, we could fill some time. Good idea, Sam. And it's my job, sir. I'm the best man. Uh, they're in the dining room. And, Sam, thanks. Max has a fine collection of Western art. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm.
Sam? Hmm? Where are they? The keepsake gifts. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. I couldn't find them. Well, they're on the side table in the dining room. I'll go. No, no. I'll have them. Thank you. Uh, just I forgot to sign the card on my present are you all right Hannah oh I'm fine really Max Gary Reverend Roper is ready to try again if we are. Great, great. Good to see you. See you. Bye. Tell me, have you seen Kay? Well, you didn't lose her, did you? She wanted to have it out with your Uncle Lon. I asked you five minutes to You're watch. You're the groom, ah, I'm the groom. Go. I thought Damn. I had talked her out of it. My daughter in there. Couldn't stop it, Mr. Parrish. Try. Just like Mr. Paris told us. Okay, and no one went in or out, you're saying, except Miss Paris, like, right? Like we said, nobody. Tenor, yes, you mentioned sir. staff, I have to call you back on this. Good. Stop. So, um... What's going to happen, Perry? That depends on Lieutenant Brock. Miss Paris, would you have a look at this, please? It's blank. That's right. But you took it with your left hand. You are left-handed, are you not, Miss Parrish? Yes, so what? So that means I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Alonzo Hawk. Sergeant, would you read her rights? Wait, wait, just, right just tell them, Kate. Gary, Caitlin, tell them that under advice of counsel, you've been instructed not to answer any questions. Judging by the entry angle of the knife wound, the killer had to be left-handed. Doctor, you're certain the autopsy will confirm that? No question. Well, thank you, Doctor. Mr. Mason, you saw for yourself your client is a left-handed artist. That's all you've got? Well, let's see what I got. I got a room here, sir, with bars on the window. I got a victim left in here, unconscious but alive. I got two doors, one locked, the other under constant surveillance by the security men outside. And I have a suspect, sir, Caitlin Parrish, who made threatening remarks against the victim and was then found standing over the body of the victim, one lawn horse. And that's what I've got, Mr. Mason. That. The key was in the lock on this side. Anyone could have entered the study from this room. I personally saw several people come in and out before Hawks was found dead. Yes, Mr. Mason, but your client was the only one found standing over the dead person with the murder weapon at her feet and blood on her hands. Now, why would she kill him? What possible motive could she have had? Uh, Mr. Mason, I'm working on that, sir. I'm working on that. Now, would you like to talk to your client before I take it downtown, sir? Thank you. Caitlin, Hawks was a violent man. If somehow you caused his death... I didn't do it, Perry. I didn't do it. The blood on your hands. He was lying on the sofa. 
I thought he was asleep. So I tried to wake him. And then I saw the knife. He was dead. Why did you want to wake him? Why did you go in there in the first place? I was mad. He attacked Dad. He ruined our wedding day. I, I don't know what I wanted to do. Just tell him off, I guess. I didn't kill him. You have to believe me. Okay, then I believe you. But there are others we'll have to convince. Terrible thing. I feel so sorry for her mother. First call, Ken. If he's still fishing, get him back. Then we have to arrange bail. Who did that? Somebody knocked my coat on the floor. And I had Caitlin's wedding invitation in the pocket. So you lost it. But it's a collector's item, Eddie, especially now. What's that? Looks like a backstage concert pass. The girl who owns this pass was hiding in that closet. She would have had a clear view of this whole front hall. She probably saw something. More than probably. I'll call Ken. Thank you for that report, Louise. Elsewhere in the news, a major traffic accident on the Interstate 80 north of Denver had traffic My pass. Hours today. This isn't a real pass. It's a giveaway. A what? Rock clubs hand these out by the hundreds as promotions. Kids put their photos in them and use them like they're the real thing, but they're not. So there's no way to trace the girl in that photo? I wouldn't say that. We know she's a fan of Caitlin's. We also know she's five foot two, 16 years old, with short brown hair. The girl, Della, the girl that ran away from us at the wedding. Oh, yes. Brown eyes. Well, I'll take this to the club that gave it out. If this girl's a regular there, somebody might recognize her picture. Ken, I had the security men make a list of everyone who entered the dining room while Hawks was in the study. I'd like them checked out. Sam Wall, Hannah Hawks, Max Parrish. Everyone, including the two security men. Ken, you take Hannah, I'll take Max. Right. Oh, but first, you have to... But first, I have to get Caitlin released on bail, I know.
You rocky? My name's Melansky, Ken Melansky. I work with Perry Mason. You might have heard of him. Is this your handout? Uh-huh. Great. You ever seen this girl in your club? You like body art, Ken? Body art? Tattoos? Got any? You know, somehow I never found the time. It's a shame you have the skin for it. It's a shame to waste it. Yeah, well, thanks. Look, could you give me a call on my mobile phone? Anytime. I mean, if you see this girl. Mm. Think about a dragon right there. I will. I'd love to work on you. I'll think about it. Call me if you see the girl, okay? Did you know your father was under investigation? By the State Artist Commission? Of course I knew. It's been going on for weeks. It's old news. Not to me. My father's a talent manager. He manages me, he manages Gary, he manages 15 or 20 other top actors and singers. Look, you manage that many people who make that much money. You're a magnet for lawsuits. It's part of the business, Mr. Mason. My father has always been completely honest and fair. He's never been accused of anything illegal. Until now. The commission thinks Max embezzled a quarter of a million dollars in client funds. That's a lie. Lie or not, why wasn't I told about it? This has got nothing to do with Gary's Uncle Lon. Lieutenant Brock thinks it does. So does the DA. They think it's an absolute motive for murder. Now... Is there anything else I should know? No. Caitlin, it's been a long time since you've been told what to do. But from here on in, I'm going to tell you what to do. He's the man, Kate. Understood? All right. All right. She needs you, Mr. Mason. She knows it, and it scares her. Please, you gotta help her. Yes, I do. I know we should have told you about the commission investigation, Perry, but Kay insisted that we keep it quiet. Why? If something like this went public, I could lose my business. Max, the prosecution's going to bring it out at the hearing. Tell me about the investigation. $250,000 is missing from our client accounts. The commission claims I embezzled it. Any idea who took the money? could have been anyone in the firm. I'm ready to make restitution, but the commission wants to investigate. Is that a problem? The records are gone. 
Wiped out by computer error. Whoever took the money must have done it. I have no way of finding out who. Were you subpoenaed? Eight days ago. Let me see the subpoena. It's at home. In your study. Where Lieutenant Brock found it the day of the murder. Damn. That's what he meant when he told me he was working on a motive. How could the commission's investigation have anything to do with the motive for Lon's murder? We were there. We all saw it. Lon Hawks brandishing an envelope and saying, this will show everybody what kind of a man you really are. He was drunk. Who knows what he meant? Max, that envelope wasn't found on Hawks' body. What are you saying? I'm saying the prosecution is going to suggest that envelope contained documents incriminating to you. They're going to suggest Caitlin killed Hawks and hid the envelope to protect you. That's ridiculous. She had the murder weapon. She was alone in the room with the body. Is that ridiculous? Who else has access to your computer? <sighs> Anyone using the main terminal has to go through me and log. Let's take a breather, okay? All right, class, pick five. Miss Hawks, I'm impressed. I like to stay in shape, Mr. Uh... Malansky, Ken Malansky. I work with Perry Mason. He's representing Caitlin Parrish. Ah, oh, yes, I know. Your tutor tells me you're a star pupil, even though you only took up karate three years ago. Mr. Poe is very kind. Three years ago? That was right around the time you moved to Seattle, wasn't it? What prompted the move? A job? Boyfriend? Mr. Malansky, are you interrogating me? Ken. <laughs> I suppose I am. Well, my singing career was over. And I didn't know what to do. So I guess I just wanted to find myself. Don't you mean lose yourself? You didn't talk to your whole family for nearly three years. But then you came back here early this year. When was that? March? April? March. That was right after your Uncle Lon was jailed for assault. <sighs> There's no connection. I didn't say that there was. You must have been very surprised when he showed up at the wedding. We all were. Lon was sentenced to 10 years. And released on appeal. You are very skilled with your hands, Miss Hawks. Both of them. Good luck with the bar. Thanks. Were all your records wiped out? No, just the, the records for the first quarter of this year. That's when they say I embezzled the funds. A selective erasure. The commission thinks it was very convenient. And uh, I can't prove otherwise. Excuse me, Max. Mr. Mason, I hear you're defending Kay. That's good news. Thank you, Mr. Wall. You're Gary's best man. I am. Sam's one of my top people. I'm lucky to have him, especially now. Max, the bank sent an update covering last month's transactions. Do you want me to enter it? Sure. Go ahead. Keep me posted about the commission's investigation. The security men, Frank Bassett, Dave Tynan, Sam Wall, Max Parrish, and Hannah Hawks. That's everything I could get on them so far. Thank you. Here's what I have to add on Hannah Hawks. She's lethal with both hands. I saw her in action. Thanks to both of you. I've talked to Caitlin and Max Parrish. That leaves the security men, Sam Wald, and... The girl in this picture. It's a copy of the photo that was in the past. I talked to the owner of the club where we think she hangs out. If she shows up there tonight, they'll give us a call. I guess all we can do is wait. We'll do the waiting. 
You'll have to find out what Lon Hawks had in that envelope. And how will I do that? Della, Gary Hawks? He's here. Well, send him in. He'll get you access to Hawks' apartment. Malansky, right? Right. Good. Okay. I spoke to the super. He said we'd go pick up the key anytime after six. So we can leave whenever you're ready. Actually, I think it's better if I go by myself. Yeah, why is that? It's the way I work. Well, that's fine. But it's my fiance who's framed for murder, and I want to participate. I mean, I don't want to just sit around here and do nothing. Hey, look, I never sit around and do nothing. I am I'm sure Gary wants to be of assistance. All right. I'll meet you at Lon Hawk's apartment at 7 o'clock, okay? Okay. I'm on the case. Perry, I don't want this guy underfoot. Ken, he may be helpful. Helpful? But Perry, he's an actor. <laughs> there, before you go to Hawk's place, I'd like you to talk with Sam Wald. He should be at this address now. All right. You know, Perry, for a second I thought somebody was tailing me this afternoon. If you were followed, it might mean this youngster is doubly important to us. Also, it might mean we should find her before the killer does. Okay. Mr. Wald? My name's Melansky. I'm an associate of Perry Mason. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, I was wondering when you'd get around to me. You guys want to talk to everyone who was in the dining room before Lon Hawks was killed, right? That's right. A car like this must be pretty expensive, huh? My only vice. You don't count women, but then uh, who does? <laughs> and at my salary, I can afford them both. How'd you hurt your hand? Oh, I uh, burnt it on the engine. Hurt like hell, I can tell you. Then you still drive? I manage. By compensating with your left hand? <laughs> um, Melansky? I was in the dining room. I didn't find what I was looking for, and I left. Guards in the hall saw me. End of story. Now, if you don't mind, I'd really like to make a few more adjustments here. If Lon Hawks had information that Max Parrish was embezzling funds from his clients, Max would be forced out of his own firm, and you'd take over, wouldn't you? I resent these insinuations. They're not insinuations. They're speculations based on fact. And I didn't hear you deny them. We'll be in touch. I think you better wait here. What are you talking about? As an attorney, you have a right to be here. You don't. Wait, wait. You know, that's what I hate about being on a soap opera. You know, nobody takes you seriously. Now, if I was Al Pacino, you wouldn't have said a word. You know, you may be right. Wait here. about time you showed up. Your dinner's run, and I hope you're happy.
Kenneth Rocky. That girl you're looking for, she's here. The mobile customer you are trying to reach is away from the car or out of our service area. Going anywhere till Mr. Vance gets here. Vance? Word of advice. Don't waste Mr. Vance's time. Just tell him what you did with the goods. What goods? He's gonna play cute. Mr. Vance will love that. Yeah, he's got a great sense of humor. When do I get to meet him? In the morning. Mr. Halford, what can you tell me about Dave Tynan? Well, for one thing, Dave Tynan's been with us only a few weeks. He worked crowd control, concerts, security for clubs, bodyguards for visiting celebs. Frank Bossett was armored car support. But Bossett worked on the parish wedding. It was a sizable job. We had to bring in almost our whole staff. I'd like to talk to Tynan and Bossett. Tynan's ship starts in about 10 minutes. You should find him in the locker room. Thank you. And, uh... Bossett. You'll have to reach him at home. I let him go yesterday. Oh? The man showed up drunk for work. I had no choice. Thank you, Mr. Halford. <laughs> Mr. Tynan? Yeah. My name is Mason. I'm representing Caitlin Parrish. Yeah, sure, I remember you. And I remember you, Mr. Tynan. You knocked Lon Hawks cold with one punch. Yeah, I'm pretty good with my hands. Good enough to earn yourself two years at Centennial Correctional Facility for assault. <laughs> Fred, you got me mixed up with somebody else. One set of fingerprints from Parrish's study led us to your rap sheet, Mr. Tynan. Now, how well did you know Lon Hawks? I never saw him before. But he served time at Centennial, same time you did. So, Hawks recognized you. That's why you hit him so hard and so fast. Why would I care? You lied to get this job. Hawks could have exposed you. All right, listen. Yeah, sure, I hit Lon to shut him up. It doesn't mean I killed him. I'm not even left-handed. But you have a very good motive. So when was I supposed to kill him? Frank was there the whole time. Look, Mr. Mason, I need this job. Don't blow it for me. So you didn't kill Lon Hawks? No, sir. I swear to it. That's all, then. I haven't heard from Ken yet. Do you want some more? Uh, no more, thank you. You're really worried, aren't you? Yes, I am. The pieces just don't fit. I just saw my father. What do you think you're doing? Trying to prepare your defense for tomorrow's preliminary hearing. You're trying to make him a suspect because of some stupid embezzlement charge. Everyone who was in that dining room is suspect. Sam Wald, Anna Hawks, even your father. 
I won't let you drag him into court. You ruin him. I know how you feel. No, you don't. I love my father. I'd do anything to protect him. Young lady, that's exactly what the prosecution wants the court to believe. They'll try to have the embezzlement charge admitted into evidence to provide you with a motive for murder. Then don't let him do it. Caitlin. Caitlin. Are you afraid your father might be guilty of this murder? No, no, he, he can't be. I know he can't be. I'm sorry, Perry. I just don't want to see him get hurt. Neither do I. I believe he's innocent. And I will do whatever I can to protect him and his reputation. All right. All right. She's tough, isn't she? She might just say the same about you. She doesn't know me. So she doesn't know how far I'd go to protect her and her family. thousand of those shipped in from Taiwan. At five bucks a pop bootleg, that's what? 250 grand. Somebody ripped off my warehouse for half of them. And there's people that tell me that somebody was you, Hawks. Hawks? Tony, hurt this boy some more. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You think I'm Lon Hawks? No, I think you're Michael Jackson. Lon Hawks is dead. My name's Melansky. Here, look at my ID. Hawks is dead? Don't you people read the newspaper? I've been out of town. You brought me a lawyer? A lawyer? Why didn't you say something before? Because I wanted to meet the head man, you. Look, I work for Perry Mason. We're trying to figure out who killed Hawks. Maybe you can help us out. Now, you say he stole some of your cassettes? Mr. Molansky, there's been a mistake. A very, very bad mistake. Thinking you were Hawks. Hey, it's okay, really. I think... Maybe we've told you too much already. You take care of this. Yeah. So listen, Tony, man. This was your deal, you understand? You take care of it. Here. Sure you're up to murder? Just so the man doesn't lose his money? You sure you want to do this? Yeah. What a bunch of dismal two-bit punks, huh? If Vance wants you to take care of this guy, why don't you use your heads? What, you gonna whack this creep right where the man keeps his goods? What's the matter with you bozos? Who are you? Hey, you are so dumb, you don't even know who I am. Tell him who I am. One life for tomorrow. What? You ever see it? Hey, right there. No, not the face, not the face. Back off. Yeah, that's better. Now get on the floor. On the floor! Take a nap. <gasps> Where are the cops? What cops? You didn't call the cops? I follow these guys. Wait outside all night in the freezing cold, bust in here and save your life, and you got nothing but criticism. Gary... I'm grateful, believe me. Now, will you please call the cops? That's all you're going to say? All right, you were terrific. Pacino wouldn't have been able to cut this. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Call him. Okay, okay, I'm calling. Call him. What were the findings of the autopsy you performed on the deceased, Dr. Stone? 
Recent contusions to the face and throat and a single penetration wound in the mid-thoracic region, eight centimeters deep, resulting in deep laceration of the superior vena cava. In layman's terms, a stab wound to the heart. In your opinion, was this the cause of death? Absolutely. What other conclusions did you draw from the stab wound, doctor? After examining the angle of entry and considering the force required to penetrate the heart, I concluded that the wound most likely would have been inflicted by a left-handed individual. Left-handed? No further questions. Dr. Stone, tell us about the contusions you found on the victim's body. I found two, one on the jaw, another on the throat. And were these recent bruises inflicted, say, within an hour of death? I assume they were received during the fight at the wedding. But if the so-called fight at the wedding was, in fact, just a single punch to the jaw, wouldn't that change your opinion about the bruises? Yes, it would. Indeed, it would. Could we not then conclude that the second bruise on the victim's throat was the result of a later struggle, probably between the victim and his killer? We could make that assumption, yes. Dr. Stone, would you describe the bruise on the throat? It was about three inches long, a quarter inch wide. About this long and wide. In your experience, doctor, would such a bruise be consistent with a violent karate blow? Yes. Exactly where was the bruise located? Here, just to the right of the Adam's apple. Could the bruise have been caused by a karate blow? I suppose so, yes. Now, would such a blow have to be delivered by someone right-handed? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, was the killer left-handed or right-handed, Dr. Stone? Or, uh, don't you know? <clears throat> no further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. It's 12.45. This court is in recess until 3 o'clock. Ah, put the speakers right over here. Mr. Mason, right there, okay? Mr. Boston, if I've come at the wrong time. Hey, no problem. I've been promising myself a good stereo system for years. I love gizmos, and I'm a jazz freak. Ella, Basie, Charlie Parker. You'll have a lot of time to catch up on your listening now that you've left your job. Yeah, I, uh, was fired. That's my severance pay. Can I help you, Mr. Mason? Yes, you can help me. I'd like to confirm your relationship with Tynan, Dave Tynan. A relationship? I don't know the guy. I don't want to know the guy. He's a jerk. And that one time at the wedding, he's a big, red-headed jerk. Thank you. That's all I need to know. Where'd you get this? First tell me if that's what I think it is. It's a bootleg tape. It's the unused track of uh, Caitlin Parrish's debut album. Where, where'd, you, where'd you get it, man? Valuable? Uh, a bootleg tape. It's worth about 15 bucks on the street. Where did you get it? If I wanted to sell 25,000 copies of that cassette to Starfront Records, Mr. Lubin, who would I talk to? You? Uh, look, I got nothing more to say. You got nothing more to say. Right now, while you're sitting there with nothing more to say, my fiance's fighting for her life. She'd go to prison for the rest of her life because you got nothing more to say. Well, I'll tell you something. I got plenty to say. And I'm going to tell it to the press. And when she finally walks out of that courtroom, because we're going to prove her innocence with or without you, people are going to wonder where you were when she needed you most. And you know what I'm going to tell them? You were right here and you had nothing more to say. Hey, Gary. Hey, Lena, listen, maybe I should... Uh... Mr. Lube, and somebody offered to sell you 25,000 copies of that bootleg cassette, and you bought them to protect your royalties. Now, who was it? I don't know. 
It was just a, just a voice on the phone. Copyright fraud and extortion. Now, that's FBI jurisdiction. Is that who helps you with the payoff? Yep. How'd it go down? We paid $100,000. The guy asked for a, a package of used bills, no consecutive numbers to be dropped from an overpass. And then once the money was collected, we got a call that told us where to find the tapes. Okay. Thanks for your time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't go public with this. I mean, we only agreed to the payoff because uh, the FBI assured us that, uh, that they'd catch him as soon as he starts spending the money. If the man you paid off is who I think it is, you don't have to worry about him spending your money anytime soon. And who is it? See you later, Mr. Lubin. Oh, no, come on. Oh, man. <laughs> Could anyone have entered the study without your seeing them? No, sir. And did you see anyone enter the study before the murder? Yes, sir. And is that person in this courtroom? Yes. Would you point that person out? Her. Indicating the defendant. No further questions. Mr. Bossett, isn't it true that although the door to the dining room was locked, the key was in the lock on the dining room side of the door? Yes. So anyone entering the dining room would have had access to the study during the time of the murder? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Parrish, is it true that you are currently under investigation by the State Artists Commission? Yes, I am, but no formal... Confine charge. yourself to answering my questions, Mr. Parrish. Isn't it true that the Commission is investigating charges regarding embezzlement? Do I have to... Answer the question. Yes, it's true. Isn't it true that these allegations concern the embezzlement of over a quarter of a million dollars? Your Honor, we will stipulate to the fact that Mr. Parrish is under investigation. However, these allegations are nothing more than allegations. Certainly, Mr. Parrish is not on trial here. Your observation is duly noted, Mr. Mason. Please get to the point, Mr. Norell. Yes, Your Honor. To the best of your knowledge, was your daughter aware of these charges? Yes. And did she know about them on the day of the murder? Yes. Did you ever discuss them with her? My daughter and I are very close. I have no secrets from her. Did she express great concern for you? Yes, of course. On the day of your daughter's wedding, when Law and Hawks interrupted the proceedings, what did he do? He barged in, was loud and insulting, demanding to know why he wasn't invited. Didn't he also display an envelope? Yes. Didn't he also hold up this envelope and say, this will show people what kind of a man you really are? Isn't that true, Mr. Parrish? Yes. And what was your daughter's reaction? Kay was upset. Upset? Witnesses have testified that your daughter said she could kill him. Kay Parrish knew the bind you were in. She suspected that the contents of Lonhawk's envelope could destroy you. Objection, Your Honor. She the loved you. Sustained. Objection, Would Your Honor. Would she kill to protect you, Mr. Parrish? Sustained. Parish? Defense objection sustained, Mr. Norell. I have no further questions for this witness. No questions, Your Honor. Witnesses excused. I feel so sorry for you. Thanks. Caitlin is done. Thank you. Lieutenant Brock, did you examine the crime scene? Yes, I did, sir. I show you this knife and ask you to identify it. This is a handmade decorative knife crafted by a local western artist. It has a five inch blade and a carved elk horn handle. And is this the murder weapon, Lieutenant? Yes, it is, sir. It has my mark on it. Would you say a woman could effectively wield this knife? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Lieutenant, 
Did you have occasion to examine the deceased? Yes, I did, sir. Did you find an envelope on the deceased? No, I did not, sir. I have no further questions. No questions. Fans continue to gather outside the Superior Court building, awaiting the results of Caitlin Parrish's preliminary hearing for the murder of Alonzo Hawks. You gotta be there. Bonnie. Caitlin needs to know her fans are behind her. You think she killed him? Your Honor. Our next witness addresses the issue of premeditation. The people call Ms. Hannah Hawks. Your Honor, the people request permission to regard this witness as a hostile witness. Permission granted. Now, at the time when your Uncle Lond was knocked down at the wedding, uh, you were standing right beside your brother and his fiance, the defendant, Caitlin Parrish, were you not? Your Honor, will the court direct the witness to answer the question? You are under oath, Ms. Hawks. Answer the question. Yes, that's where I was standing. And what did you hear Kay Parrish say regarding her feelings towards your uncle, Lon Hawks? She said I could kill him. Please speak up. She said I could kill him, but she didn't mean it. No further questions. People say and do things they don't mean and later on regret. Your witness, Counselor. You're right about people, Miss Hawks. Miss Hawks, may I call you Hannah? Yes, of course. Isn't it true that you once tried to kill Lon Hawks? No. Three years ago, you tried to stab your uncle Lon with a kitchen knife. If your brother hadn't stopped you, you would have killed him. Gary still doesn't know why you did it, but I think I do. I don't know what you mean. You disappeared for almost three years. You never wrote to your family, never called, didn't in any way communicate. Hannah, why don't you at last tell all of us what really happened? Uncle Lon beat me so severely that I had to go to the hospital. Your uncle was a violent man, was he not? Uh, objection, Your Honor. The victim is not on trial here. Your Honor, I request the widest possible latitude in order to get at the truth. Answer the question. He, um... He fractured my jaw and dislocated my shoulder. He could be a very violent man, especially if he'd been drinking. You must have hated him, and you kept what happened a secret. Well, I never told Gary. I never told anyone. Why not? Because Uncle Lon frightened me. You have no idea what it feels like to be that afraid. So three years ago, you left home and stayed away till this last March, when Hawks was arrested and sentenced to prison for assault. I thought I was finally rid of him. Then you saw him at Gary's wedding. Did you still hate him? More than you can imagine. Enough to kill him? Yes, I wanted to. And I think I probably could have. But I didn't kill him. No further questions. Any redirect? Uh, no, Your Honor. In that case, this court is recessed for 30 minutes. Oh, I heard what happened. I'm so worried. It's nothing. All right, I have good news and I have bad news. There's no answer at that club. Either Rocky's not there or the phone's unplugged. So far, that club of hers has turned out to be a dead end. But I think I know what was in that envelope Lon Hawks was waving around. You can tell us. His wedding present. $100,000 extorted from Kay's record company. That's what Hawks planned to give Kay and Gary for a wedding present? 
Maybe he meant that his gift would show everybody that Lon Hawks was just as good as Max Parrish. That's quite a bit of money. So we have another motive for murder and another suspect. All right, you two. Now we have to find that girl before he does. Mr. Wall, do you have limited access to the parish computer records, do you not? That's right. According to this log, you accessed the company computer on June the 23rd. That was strictly routine. But June the 23rd wasn't exactly a routine day. June the 23rd was the day that the parish financial records were subpoenaed by a state commission. Tell me... Tell me, how much do you earn as a talent manager, Mr. Walt? In a good year, um, $60,000. Oh. Do you have a private income? <laughs> I wish. You own a very expensive race car. Second hand. Do you have an account at the Transworld Bank of Chicago? Yes. Would you explain how, with an annual income of $60,000, you made a deposit of $250,000 to your account on February 20th this year? I don't recall. Max Parrish has been accused of embezzling $250,000 in client funds during the first quarter of this year. Now, who really took that money, Mr. Walt? There's no way to know that the... Uh... Computer records are gone. Oh, that's true. The computer records are gone. But not these records. According to your bank statement, you wrote a check on June the 23rd to one Mitchell Carter for $30,000. Mitchell Carter, a computer expert with experience in tapping into computers and making records disappear. I don't know any Mitchell Carter. According to... Uh, this document, you hired Mitchell Carter because you needed someone who could get to pertinent records and destroy evidence of your embezzlement of that $250,000. No, that's not true. Max. Don't go to Max. Read Mr. Carter's declaration. It's right there. A declaration which will be submitted to the commission and to this court. It tells how Mr. Carter gained access to the records for you and of your attempt to conceal your crime. Mr. Wald, when Lon Hawks turned up at the parish wedding waving that envelope, isn't it true you thought it held proof of your guilt? I had no idea what he had in mind. Didn't you kill Hawks to protect yourself? No. No, I, I didn't kill Hawks. I didn't kill him. Mr. Wald, you did not kill Lon Hawks? Talk to me! No. No further questions. Your Honor, the prosecution requests a recess. You may step down, Mr. Wald. This court is adjourned until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. something for me, Rocky? Yeah. That girl you're looking for is here. All right, keep her there. I'm on my way.
are you? My name's Melansky. I need to talk to you about what happened at Kate Parrish's wedding. <laughs> Tynan, were you employed as a security guard at the parish wedding? Yes, sir. Along with Frank Bossett? That's right. Mr. Tynan, are you left-handed? No. Did you serve two years at Centennial Correctional Facility for assault? Yeah. Yeah, I did time. And while you were there, did you box on the prison team? Sure. I understand you won all your bouts. That your biggest asset was the ability to knock a man out with either hand. Yeah. Yeah, I could fight. Uh, Lon Hawks was at Centennial with you, wasn't he? I don't know. Uh, he might have been. In fact, Hawks was in your cell block. When he recognized you at the parish wedding, you panicked and knocked him out, did you not? I knocked him out because he was making trouble. In order to hit Hawks on the right side of the jaw, you had to use your left hand, did you not? I don't remember. After knocking him out, didn't you stab him to death with that same left hand? Not me, Counselor. I was in the hallway the whole time. Frank Bossett was in the hallway with me the entire time. And if you don't believe me, ask him. That's right. Me and Tynan was out in the hole the whole time. Neither of you took a break. Was there the whole time. How well do you know Dave Tynan? Met him that one time. Haven't seen him since. Mr. Bossett, did you recently buy some expensive stereo equipment? Yeah, so? How did you pay, cash or credit? <laughs> what difference does it make? When I spoke to the company where you bought the equipment, you paid cash, did you not? Yeah. Use my uh, savings. No further questions at this time, but I reserve the right to recall, Your Honor. Mr. Bossett, I don't want the defense to uh, confuse the issue. You and Dave Tynan were continuously on duty in the hall outside the study. Is that correct? Yeah. And until the defendant entered the study, you saw no one else go in, right? That's right. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor? Your Honor, defense calls Miss Susie Richards to the stand. Susie Richards, have we met before? Well, we bumped into each other. And when we bumped into each other, did you drop your souvenir backstage pass? I, I must have. Yes, I did. Now, when you took the stand, I gave you Defense Exhibit G found by Della Street at the parish residence in the room where you bumped into us. Now, is that your souvenir backstage pass? Yes, sir. Tell us, Susie, how did you happen to attend the parish and Hawk's wedding? Well, I sort of snuck in. Where did you go when you snuck in? There was a, a closet in the hall. I hid in there. From your vantage point in this closet, could you see out into the hall? When I opened the door crack, I could, yes. Now, why would you do that? I kept saying to myself, I can't believe I'm missing this. I mean, Caitlin Parrish's wedding, and I'm trapped in a closet, you know. But um, I couldn't get out because 
Those two security guys were standing there. But you did get out. Well, yeah, eventually. I don't know when, but it was right after somebody made an announcement. What kind of announcement? I think it was her father saying he was sorry everything was delayed. And then some music started, and that's when I got out. But weren't the two guards there to stop you? No, uh-uh, they were gone. Did you see where they went? Hey, all I knew was that they were gone, and I got out of there. Your witness, Counselor. Uh, no questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, defense recalls Frank Bossett. Okay, okay, so we were gone for a couple of minutes. It was hot. We were thirsty. During the time you were gone, the study was unguarded. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. yeah. This folder. What do you think this folder holds, Mr. Boston? How would I know? Please tell us what you think. Well, what are you trying to get me to say? It's, 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 it's full of cocaine. I'm trying to get you to say what you feel. What does it feel like? It feels like, like money. It feels like money. You knew Lon Hawks. You knew the folder that he carried held money because you picked it up. You can't prove there was money in it. The envelope's gone. Whatever was in it, that's gone too. Mr. Bossett, Lon Hawks was carrying money that day, say $100,000 in cash. Objection. That is pure conjecture. Your Honor, I was about to prove it. You may continue, Mr. Mason. If a man stole that kind of money, you'd expect him to lay low for a while, wouldn't you? Not draw attention to himself? Yeah, I, I, I suppose, yeah. The man who stole that money was tempted to spend just a little of it, wasn't he? Spend it on a nice new stereo. Why don't you tell us about it, Mr. Bossett? Tell you what? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about how you and Dave Tynan, two men who barely knew each other, conspired to murder Lon Hawks. You can't prove it. You can't prove anything. Your Honor, referring to our conference this morning, we can proceed with the demonstration. Bailiff. Will you proceed? Lon Hawks extorted $100,000 from Starfront Records. The FBI handled the payoff. Neither Hawks nor his killers knew that the FBI treated the payoff money with an invisible dye. Now, the lights, please, Your Honor. Bailiff, the lights. <laughs> Anyone in recent contact with that treated money would show the dye in his hands in a so-called black light. Thank you. A black light like this one, Mr. Bossett. Now let's see your hands. You just had to spend it, didn't you, Frank? Come on! You killed him! You killed him! He killed him! Per, are you okay? Uh, you knocked out right. uh, my shoulder. See you back at the office. Take these men into custody and get the paramedics in here immediately. Stay down. Perry! Perry! No, Perry's okay. It's are you a shoulder sure right? again. We'll see you at the office. Red Eye. Bella, have you looked at you just couldn't wait, could you? Mr. Norell, Mr. Malansky, this case is dismissed and the court is adjourned. Della. Please tell Perry I owe him so much. He's given me back my daughter. Why don't you tell him yourself? I can't. There's so much you don't know about Barry and me. Oh, Laura. I know. I really know. <laughs> Good luck. Yes.
great team or what? We had our moments. Moments? I think we got a series here, all right? I'll call you. We were a pretty good team, too. Right. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm on my way. Ken. Enjoy your fishing trip. We are a good team. Now send us some fish. <laughs> Father, really, officer. Yes. Yes, he does. 